I want to talk with you about capital gains and capital gains taxes. Now, when we uh, put money into the stock market, we do it to gain money, to make a profit. And um, I want to talk with you about the tax ramifications of that and so forth. There's two kinds of um, capital gains. There's realized capital gains and unrealized capital gains, all right? Magnificently important to understand the two. Uh, realized capital gains, that's when you have sold your stocks and you've made a profit and you're going to uh, be accountable for potentially tax to be levied on that. But unrealized capital gains, that's where you um, put $100 into a stock and it goes up and it's worth $200, but you don't sell it. Well, it has escalated a little in value, but you haven't sold it, so it's unrealized capital gains, and no taxes are owed until it becomes realized capital gains. All right. Now, there's two kinds of um, realized capital gains. Uh, what are they? There's long-term capital gains and short-term capital gains, and they're magnificently different. You're going to pay in all likelihood, more taxes on short-term gains um, than on long-term. Let's talk about this. All right, so over here is short-term capital gains. What is that? Well, you bought that stock for $100, and it went up to $200, and um, in 360 days after you bought it, it's doubled in price, and you sell it, but it's less than one year. It's one year or less. So you're going to be taxed at short-term capital gains. Now, that's very different tax bracket than long-term. Short-term uh, uh, capital gains, you're going to pay just your ordinary tax. Whatever you're taxed at on your income, that's what you're going to be taxed on your, uh, your short-term. But if you hold that stock, longer than one year. Say you hold it for 13 months and then you cash it out, you sell it. And uh, it was a $100 stock and, and you sold it 13 months later for $200. Okay, it's no longer short term. It's more than a year. And so now it goes for long-term capital gains. So uh, what's the tax number? What's the percentage of tax? That's the critical thing, short-term percentage versus long-term percentage. Long-term percentage could be zero. Zero tax? Oh, yeah, zero tax. For example, I've got, uh, I've got some numbers here in front of me. And uh, so uh, your husband and wife, uh, you're married, you're filing jointly, and you have an income of less than $80,000, well, your capital gains tax, if it's long-term capital gains, is zero. Now, if you make 100000 oh, that's different. Um, there's uh, currently three different tax brackets on long-term capital gains. There's zero, which is a wonderful number. But there's also 15%. If you make a certain amount of money, you get taxed at 15%. Uh, at but if you make even more money, you're taxed at 20%. That's the, the top um, price of the uh, tax on long-term. Currently is 20%. And I say currently because I want to tell you something. Uh, Mr. Biden, our president, is proposing to raise the tax rate on capital gains. Um, now, can President Biden all by himself make a statutory law? No, we're not set up that way. No, 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 you cannot do that, Mr. Biden, Mr. Trump, Mr. Obama, Mr. Bush, whoever is the president, they cannot make statutory law. Presidents can't do that. You see, we've got the congressional um, you know, legislative side that makes laws. We have the executive branch, which is president and then the vice president. They are to execute the law. And then you've got the judicial branch, 
that is supposed to interpret the law. That's the, the three branches of government in, in America. Legislative, which is our Congress, which is made up of House and Senate. And then you've got President and Vice President. That's the executors, the executive branch. They are to execute the law. And then the court system, uh, which is to interpret the law. Okay. So this group over here is who makes the law. But Mr. Biden has influence. As the President of the United States of America, he has influence, and he's proposing, he's seeking to raise the tax rate on capital gains. And um, do you know, let me, let me explain something to you. Already, high investors, high investors, those who are you know, really savvy at this and they've done it for a long time and they've got a, a pretty good size amount of money. High investors already have a SUR tax, S-U-R-T-A-X. Whatever tax they pay, they also have this SUR tax. Uh, how much is that SUR tax? 3.8%. So if you're a big investor, you've got a SUR tax. Oh, you're kidding. No, no, I'm not kidding. Um, that's added to whatever tax bracket you're in. There's a surtax of 3.8%. For example, let me explain this. If Mr. Biden's proposal goes through, the high investors could be paying 39.6% tax plus 3.8% surtax for a grand total of 43.4% tax. Did you hear that number? 43.4%. That's besides them having to pay sales tax anytime they buy something, paying uh, tax on their properties, tax, 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 tax. I want to tell you something. I am against progressive tax rates. Uh, God, God Almighty, who spoke this universe into existence, who has all power at his disposal, he saves people. He saved me. I received Christ as my Savior. I am a Christian. And the Bible tells about a tax, if you would call it that. It's called the tithe, T-I-T-H-E. And, uh, and what percentage is it? 10%. So if you make $100, you give 10% to the work of the Lord. You go over there to your church and you put 10% in. Well, what if you make $1,000? Then you go over there and pay 10%. It's $100. Well, what if you make $100,000? Yeah, you give 10% of $100,000, which is $10,000. It's a flat rate. God doesn't go up and down on it. So why is the United States of America penalizing you? That's the way I look at it. If you're successful, we're going to make you pay a higher tax uh, rate. I don't think that's very good. I don't think that's very equitable. Now, I'm not in that high tax bracket, but I want those up there in the high tax bracket to make as much money as possible. I want them to be able to give. I want them to employ people. I want them to be as productive as absolutely possible in the United States of America and around the world, whatever they can do that's honest and right and proper. I don't want to penalize them and add an extra tax. You, you've been successful, so we're going to add an extra tax on you. That's not good. That doesn't incentivize people to go for great success. That de-incentivizes people to accomplish great things. Why on earth would we do that? Mm, there's a reason. I don't want to tell you the reason. I want you to think about that. I want you to meditate on that. Why would we have progressive tax where that if you uh, work hard and work harder and uh, you work smart and you work smarter, why would we make you pay more tax, a higher percentage? Don't we want Americans to achieve do we want people to be lazy? That's not good. Do we want to become a socialist country? Socialism has never, ever worked. Never. It's not good. 
men love competition. They love to achieve. They like to accomplish. But we don't like to be penalized if we achieve something. Um, it's just not good. And uh, the minimum tax is not, I mean, minimum wage, that's not good. There's a lot of things uh, that are just not good. And we need some, um, some very savvy people to get uh, with a little authority and to repeal certain things. And um, the greatest book in the whole world on finances is the Bible. We need to get back to the Word of God. Like, like 30 a trillion $30 trillion in national debt? That's not smart. The borrower is servant to the lender. Why do we want to become a debtor nation? Uh, how long has it been since we've had a balanced budget in America? A couple of years ago, um, maybe three years ago now, two to three years ago, I asked my uh, House of Representative, I asked him, I said, I want a, a copy of the United States budget. He said, <laughs> wouldn't we all like to have one? I said, sir, I'm not joking. I want to see it, and I want to look at it. I want to review it, and I'm expecting for us to live within our means. Now, I'm a tiny little nobody. I, I love the Lord. I'm going to try to let my little light shine, and... Um, I'm trying on the local levels to get my city and my state back to God and to godly principles. I think there is some kind of an awakening in America, and I'm certainly praying for that. I want to see every American saved and everybody in the whole world saved. And then follow the Bible and love your neighbor and uh, don't take advantage of others and be equitable. And don't penalize people for achieving. I don't think 